Hello everyone, today I want to talk some Armor 2.0. Now I know I've technically already made a video on Armor 2.0, but we didn't really get to dive into it as much as we're capable of diving in right now. A lot of you are probably still in the process of leveling up, getting to 950, so until you start getting up to higher levels and getting higher stat rolls, you're not going to need to worry a ton about Armor 2.0 and modding your gear and all of that. Let's talk stats first. Stats are RNG, but generally speaking, the harder the difficulty of the activity that gives a reward, the higher your stat rolls are going to be on that reward, most of the time. For example, pulling an exotic out of collections gives an item with 48 total stats. Anything in the 40s or low 50s is generally considered a low stat roll and can be pretty safely dismantled unless it just happens to be the highest thing that you have. You're going to be looking for stuff in the upper 50s and lower 60s. Anything in the 60s is going to be good. I was actually able to buy old high stat roll Leviathan armor with tokens from the two opulence vendors as well. So keep that in mind if you're looking for some gear. I don't know how long that's going to stick around. That being said, a stat roll is only as good as the build that it's in. If you need strength for a build, it doesn't matter if you rolled a piece of armor with 64 stats on it if it's not in the stats that you want. Having good stat rolls for the build you are going to use is better than just having high overall stats. Also, having stats in between tiers is useless. For example, if you have 51 intellect, that is the exact same thing as having 59 intellect because you're still in the fifth tier. Try not to have stats that aren't doing anything for you, although sometimes there just won't be anything you can actually do about those extra non-functioning stats. We're working with six different stats now. Armor, Agility, and Recovery, and Discipline, Strength, and Intellect. Which begs the question, what stats do you need? Well, it depends on the build that you're making, and you can do whatever you want. Now, to some people, I imagine that was awesome to hear, and to others, a horrifying realization that you might not have a clue as to what you should do. Discipline, Strength, and Intellect are stats that are more directly felt on a minute-to-minute -minute gameplay basis, at least to me. You can feel the effects of having high amounts of these stats. Recovery is also in this group and is the most noticeable of the other three stats in terms of minute-to-minute -minute gameplay. Mobility got some tweaks and resilience was made significantly more clear as to what it does. However, it is hard to notice the effects of resilience in PvE, with mobility, at least to me, not mattering as much as something like recovery. You can feel the difference between low and high recovery in PvE. I cannot say the same for resilience. I've been experimenting with my Warlock a lot recently, and today I'm going to make a build for Stormcaller to show you an example of how you can build your characters. Typically, your build is going to revolve around the subclass branch that you select, along with an exotic that enhances that subclass branch. An example might be Skull of Dire Ahamkara and Nova Bomb Warlock. However, this build only works with one of the four parts of your subclass branch, and thus would have different goals and a different loadout compared to if you wanted to utilize the other portions of your subclass branch. Stormcaller has three exotics dedicated to it. Crown of Tempest, Geomag Stabilizers, and the new exotic Storm Dancer's Brace. Two of these exotics are focused on enhancing our super ability. Geomags makes our Chaos Reach last longer, and Dancers make our Storm Trance do more damage. We'll be focused on Crown of Tempest for the purposes of this video, as I think exotics that enhance non-super abilities have more interesting or skillful combat loops. Crown of Tempest gives us a stack of Conduction Tines whenever we get an ability kill. Conduction Tines is a buff that lasts 6 seconds, stacking up to 3 times that regenerates our abilities. This includes our super. While you can choose almost any of the subclass branches to make this build work, I went with Top Tree for Arc Web and a longer lasting super. Arc Web is where enemies damaged by your grenades can chain lightning to other enemies, and every time a chain happens, you get grenade energy back. Our goal for this build, to make it work at its maximum, is to have Conduction Tines at 3 stacks at all times, meaning grenade energy is going to be really good to have. 
This build is executed by using your grenade. I like Arc Bolt for the basically guaranteed kill, although Storm is cool too, to kill three targets. Then, when your Tyne's buff is about to run out, you kill an enemy with your charged melee, which refreshes the stacks. Your grenade will come back in that time, which you use to continue the buff, going back and forth between the two until you have your super. Arc Web can get us really fast grenades if we're in areas with a lot of enemies, like Vex Offensive. But if you're not fighting a lot of stuff at once, Bottom Tree's Rising Storm can get us a chunk of energy on everything. This build works best when you can slay tons of enemies without much interference, whether that's due to not enough enemies spawning in or your teammates taking your kills. So we're looking at basically all seasonal activities, Forges, Reckoning, Menagerie, Vex Offensive, and solo play. So we have our gameplay loop for our build. Now we want to use perks to enhance our build to make it easier or better or more efficient. Perk mods are best found by turning in tokens at shacks, or I would also assume Zavala, and by doing activities or hitting up the gunsmith. Enhanced perk mods typically come from higher level content, but the best way to farm them would be from the 950 or 980 Nightfall. The elemental affinity of your armor piece, Arc Solar Void, will determine which weapon perks can be utilized on those pieces. For example, Arc has the Pulse Rifle, Shotgun, Bow, Machine Gun, and Sword mods, Solar has Auto Rifle, Fusion, Linear Fusion, Rocket, and SMG, and Void has Grenade Launcher, Scout Rifle, Sidearm, Hand Cannon, and Sniper. Unfortunately, since we're an ability-focused build, our options for ability perks are low. Gloves will hold Impact, Induction, and Momentum Transfer on Arc and Solar Gloves respectively. Impact Induction gets us Grenade Energy on Melee Hit and Momentum Transfer the other way around. Which one you should take depends on our weapon loadout. Speaking of which, for weapons for this build, we're going to be looking out for the Demolitionist perk, which gives us Grenade Energy on Weapon Kills. Alternatively, we could use Monte Carlo, new with Shadow Keep, which can generate crazy amounts of melee energy. If we have neither, Bad Juju can get us a lot of super energy. You'll find me recommending these weapons frequently for any ability-based build. Monte Carlo will be quite a valuable weapon in any melee-based builds going into the future. So, depending on what weapon we chose, we'll pick the corresponding element that matches. Although, if we picked a weapon in the Void category, then we'll either have to skip out on one of those perks, which would not be ideal, or we would have to miss out on whatever perks match our weapon. In this example, I have a hand cannon with Demolitionist, which is Void, which doesn't match what we need. In this case, I think I would still take the perk and miss out on the hand cannon boosts from the Void armor. In the case of Season 8, we have Enhanced Hand Cannon Reloader for 1 energy in the Seasonal Artifact, as opposed to the 5 energy it would cost us to use a generic reload mod, so we lucked out for now. Season 9, 10, 11 may not have these options. If you chose Monte Carlo, you might want the Solar Gloves for the Auto Rifle Reloader, although again, in this particular season, we have Enhanced Auto Rifle Reloader in our Seasonal Artifact, meaning if we wanted to use Impact Induction on the Arc Gloves, we could do that and also have our Auto Rifle Reload Speed mod for cheap. The non-affinity specific mods, the ones that affect a wide range of weapons, have the same effect as a mod for a specific weapon, but the cost is just higher. This is the stuff I was just talking about. For example, the reloader mods on gloves all cost 5 energy, whereas if you picked a specific weapon, the specific weapon mod would cost less. Finally, the only other non-season artifact mod perk that we can get is on our class item, at least for this build. We have a lot of options here, and this is really going to depend on what you want. In the Arc Affinity, we have Explosive Finisher, Hands-On, Invigoration, 1-2 Finisher, and Outreach. All of these perks get us Grenade Energy, Melee Energy, or Super Energy, but the conditions are all different. The Solar Affinity is based around grenade usage, grenade giving super energy on kills or getting grenade energy when doing something. The Void Affinity is based more on class ability usage, so we're probably not going to be taking it. 
In Season 8 specifically, we have access to Thunder Coil from the Seasonal Artifact. This mod costs 6, which means we're left with 4 potential energy if we use it, assuming we upgrade to 10 energy. Is Thunder Coil plus 2 other mods that cost 4 energy total worth it? Should we opt for 3 mods that cost 3, 3, and 4? Maybe 4, 4, 2? Maybe we only need 9 energy? These are the questions you'll have to answer for your gear set via experimentation. Or maybe a future YouTube guide. Note, upgrading to 10 energy on an armor piece gives that armor piece plus 2 stats to everything. So it's pretty good to upgrade to 10 energy, but it's also very expensive. The rest of the perk slots should be filled in with whatever you feel will be most effective for your weapons. If you're rolling with Monte Carlo, maybe stocking up on auto rifle perks is going to benefit you. If you're using a machine gun, grab that scavenger leg armor. Maybe you just want to stock up on more melee and grenade energy so you just use a bunch of those mods for the first slot. Go for it. This is your build. Do what you want. That is my tutorial on Armor 2.0 and how to build an armor set. I hope it was helpful. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.